In this video, we're going to talk about the homopolar motor and how it works. So to get this project started, what you need is a strong magnet, ideally a rare earth neodymium magnet, and you need a battery. I'm going to use the AA battery, but you could use a AAA battery, a C battery, or a D-sized battery. They can all work. And then finally, you need copper wire. You could use the 18 gauge or the 20 gauge size copper wire. And you need to shape it into a coil as the picture shows. So what we're gonna do right now is watch a demonstration of this motor in action. Now let's talk about what causes the motor to spin. Let's say if you have a conductor or a wire and there is a current flowing in this wire. The current is represented by the symbol I. And this current is flowing in the presence of a magnetic field represented by the symbol B. In this case, the magnetic field will exert a magnetic force on the moving charges. And that force is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the current. And the formula that describes the magnetic force on a current carrying wire is this equation. It's equal to the magnitude of the current times the length of the wire times the strength of the magnetic field times sine of the angle between the current and the magnetic field. The magnetic force, or also known as the Lorentz force acting on a current carrying wire is at its maximum value when the magnetic field and the current are at right angles to each other. That is, when they're perpendicular to each other. When a magnetic field and the current are parallel to each other, the force will be equal to zero. So there's not going to be any magnetic force. Sine of zero degrees is equal to zero. So this whole thing becomes zero. However, sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So to generate the maximum magnetic force, you want the magnetic field and the current to be perpendicular to each other. Now let's talk about how this homopolar motor actually spins. You need to be familiar with something called the right hand rule, which I'm going to talk about shortly. But first, let me just get rid of a few things. Now, let's focus on this magnet. We're going to say that the top part of the magnet, let's assume that that's the north pole, and the bottom part is the south pole. If you reverse the polarity of the magnet, if you flip it, the direction of the rotation will reverse. But let's assume that the north pole is facing the battery. So this is N, this is S. The magnetic field leaves the north pole and flows towards the south pole. It goes from north to south. Like that. Now let's focus on this part of the wire. Current flows from the positive terminal of the battery all the way through the magnet and back to the negative terminal of the battery, which is here at the bottom. Now keep in mind though that conventional current represented by I is opposite to the direction of electron flow. In actuality, the electrons are flowing from the negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal of the battery. But when dealing with conventional current, it's in the opposite direction. So just keep that in mind. Let's call this point A. At point A, the current is flowing in the negative y direction. The magnetic field, you can see it's pointing towards the right. It's flowing in the positive x direction. Now what we want to do is determine the direction of the force at point A. 
we need to use something called the right hand rule. So using your right hand, what you want to do is you want to point your thumb in the direction of the current. And then the remaining four fingers point it in a direction towards the magnetic field. And then notice where the palm of your hand opens up towards. If you do this correctly, you'll see that the palm of your hand, it opens out of the page. That's going to be the direction of the force. Out of the page is in the positive Z direction. So I'm going to represent that with a dot inside of a circle. It turns out that anywhere along this line, if you apply the right hand rule, the force is coming out of the page, which means that the magnetic force is causing this particular motor to turn in this direction. That is, if you view it from the top, it's turning in the clockwise direction. Now let's use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic force at point B. So at point B, the current is still flowing in the same direction. That is, it's flowing in the negative y direction. The magnetic field, however, is no longer flowing in the positive x direction, but now it's flowing in the negative x direction. So using the right hand rule, what you want to do is you want to point your thumb in the direction of the current, and then your four fingers, my drawing is kind of terrible, so you just have to make the best of it, but you want to draw your four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field that is towards the right. So using your right hand, this time, the palm of your hand is facing into the page. So that's where the magnetic field will be coming out of. It's going to be going into the page. So in this case, to represent that, we are going to use a circle with an X. Anywhere along this wire, if you follow the same process, on the left side, the magnetic field is going into the page. I mean, not the magnetic field, the magnetic force, or the Lorentz force, which means that the left side is turning in this direction, which is still the clockwise direction. So when orienting the magnet like this, if we have the North Pole, facing towards the battery, the rotation will be clockwise. If we reverse the polarity of the magnet, it's going to be counterclockwise. Or if we reverse the polarity of the battery, if we put the positive terminal at the bottom, the rotation is going to change as well. It's going to reverse. Now, let's talk about some other things. For instance, how can we increase the speed of rotation? How can we make this motor spin faster? There are a few things that we can do. Number one is we want to increase the magnetic force acting on the coil. Because if we can increase it, we can increase the speed of rotation. So one way to do that is to increase the current. The current that's flowing through the coil is directly related to the magnetic force acting on the coil. And so in order to increase the current, what you want to do is use a high performance AA battery or battery that can release a lot of current because not all AA batteries are the same. Some batteries, they ha they are the, of the low performance type. Others are, you know, they perform very well. They can generate a lot of current. They have a very low internal resistance. So to get a lot of current flowing through this coil, use a very, very good AA battery. Number two, the second thing you could do to increase the magnetic force is you can adjust the length of the coil. According to that equation, if you increase the length of the coil, the strength of the magnetic field acting on that wire will increase. So for instance, if we increase the length of this segment of the coil, we should get 
a stronger magnetic force acting on the coil. As long as the magnetic field is still acting in that general area. Number three is increasing the strength of the magnetic field. If we can do that, we can increase the strength of the magnetic force. So instead of using one magnet, what you could do is maybe use two or even three magnets, or maybe even four. So each magnet will increase the strength of the magnetic field that's acting on the coil. So that's one thing you can do. The second thing is you can increase or rather decrease the distance between the coil and the magnet. So let me draw two pictures to illustrate this. So here we have the magnet at the bottom and this is the coil of wire. So the strength of the magnetic field is going to be stronger when you're very close to the magnet. This coil here is very far away from the magnet. So therefore, the magnetic force at this point will be weaker than the magnetic force at a distance closer to the magnetic field. So putting the coil of wire very close to the magnetic field, you're going to have a stronger effect. The magnetic field is stronger when you're closer to the magnet compared to when you're further away. So this coil should spin faster because the copper coil is very close to the magnet. This one should spin slower because it's further away. So number four has to do with distance. If we can decrease the distance between the coil and the magnet, we can increase the strength of the magnetic field acting on the, the coil and so thus we can increase the magnetic force. Another thing has to do with the concept of inertia. And the conservation of angular momentum. To illustrate this, imagine a skater who is currently spinning with her arms stretched out. In this case, the inertia is large, but she's not spinning very fast when her arms are stretched out. She's spinning very slowly at this point. However, if she crosses her arms, like brings it inward while she is spinning, you'll see that her speed, her angular speed will increase. And so she's going to spin at a higher rate. And this has to do with the conservation of angular momentum. I1, in this case, not the current, but the inertia, times W1, the angular speed, is equal to I2 times W2. So by decreasing the inertia, that is by bringing her arms closer to her center, the angular speed will increase. The same is true for this particular homopolar motor on the left. Because the coil of wire is closer to the center, it has less inertia. And as a result, it could spin at a higher angular speed. Now for the homopolar motor at the bottom right, the mass of the coil, it's further away from the center. And so it has more inertia. Inertia is equal to mass times R squared. So R has to do with the distance of the mass away from the center. So the mass of a rotating object, if it's further away from the center, the inertia is going to be higher. Whereas if the mass is closer to the center, the inertia is going to be lower. So inertia is not only related to mass or the quantity of matter in an object, but it's also related to how that mass is distributed around that object. So for this coil of wire, the mass is further away from the center, so it has a higher inertia, which means it's harder for it to spin quickly. So objects with a very low inertia can spin at a higher rate, whereas objects with a higher inertia tend to spin at a lower rate. So that's another reason why decreasing the distance between the magnet and the coil, or in this case the coil in the center, you can increase the speed of rotation. Now let's look in on a demonstration of two different homopolar motors, one in which 
the mass of the copper wire is very close to the battery and the other in which the copper wire is further away from the battery. Notice the difference in the speed of rotation. As we saw in the previous two demonstrations, the homopolar motor with the copper wire that is closer to the center of rotation spinned at a much higher speed. Therefore, if you want to increase the speed at which the motor is spinning, you want to decrease the distance of the copper wire from its center of rotation and perhaps increase the strength of the magnetic field by using more magnets and increase the current flowing through the wire by using a very good battery. And so that's it for this video. Now for those of you who want to see more demonstrations or more designs of homopolar motors that I've created, I'm going to post the link in the description section below of this video that you can take a look at. Or you can go to the YouTube search bar, type in homopolar motor organic chemistry tutor and it should also come up that way as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.